Let me bang you, I do bang. let you bang. Let me bang you, 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 Let For your favorite mixed martial arts podcast, recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam. Hey, welcome to Brenda and Mary Roasted podcast. Me, Adam Hunter. I'm here with Bill Dawes and his cat. Uh, it's going to be a great, great show, uh, I think, or it could be the worst show because the wives. I'm in Tennessee in the comedy condo. It's not really a condo. It's like a hotel. It's a place called the Choo Choo Room. It's trains everywhere. I'm in a fucking, just trains. And there's like <laughs> restaurants and trains. And, and the comedy club is at a train. And I, I'm in a train. And in order for me to like, there's no front desk. I had to, I, I don't even know where I am. I'm in the flat suite. But uh, the Wi-Fi is like, dude, I, I like flew in last night. I get to the airport at like 1230 at night. And I do a show at a dispensary, which are always the best shows. But it's not a dispensary. It's like a comedy yeah. club thing that's like sponsored by a dispensary. So everyone's high as fuck. Those are the only shows you want to go on early. Like, like that's when you want to go on first, but the second. Yeah. I like, by the fourth comic, anything that takes too long to think, people are just, and there's like some like four black dudes laughing at everything. They're getting high, some hot white stripper. And I'm like, when's the gang bang start? Like, like they're just right. It's, just, <laughs> it's one of those things. My wife came, she actually, I think she, she like saw me do comedy again. So like, I think she fell in love with me again. Not that she wasn't in love with me before, but she nice. thought something that I'm good at, you know? Uh, so, that was, so that was good. And then, uh, let me see what the Wi-Fi, it's on a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, that, that info is wrong. So, so now I'm going, anyway, the info is, this is a great show. The info is wrong. Uh, so anyway, so then I get to the flight and I'm so uh, stoned and all of a sudden they cancel the flight. They're like, listen, oh, your flight got canceled. But nobody told me. So now I'm looking through my emails and texts. I'm like, no, they're like, oh yeah, uh, we had you on last night's flight. I'm like, well, it's not like, well, they're like, oh, don't worry. We can get you there, but it's going to be a 12 hour layover in Houston. Holy shit. So I get to Houston at six o'clock in the morning and I don't leave till four in the afternoon. So I, now I'm sleeping on the floor in the airport, like a homeless, people are giving me dollar bills and, I, and I'm stoned from the, from the dispensary show. So just, wait, I, from smoking for a second, secondhand smoke, was it just oh, like, both, both. Oh, yeah. I got high before I got. So now I'm like hungry the whole time. But there was no, there's no food on the plane. But I'm starving. But then they said you can put your mask down if you eat. So I just bought like 12 bags of Skittles. I just ate the entire time. <laughs> so I have to wear the mask because I'm like high. I can't breathe. Anyway, oh yeah. So that, but then I, I go right to the show and I get there. The show happened to be great. It was, it was like just people just ready to laugh, having a good time. And now here I am. And now I'm teaching a wrestling seminar for Toothless Tom tomorrow. Anyway, how are you? <laughs> I'm not, not nearly as dramatic in my life, man. Why do they have, what's up with the trains there? Is that where they invented the train or something? I haven't even figured or that out. run trains in the There's condo or what, what's it's, the it's, thing? It's, like, it's called the Choo Choo. The choo -choo the, I, I wanted to bring my kid because it's like an arcade. And, and then there's like, um, there's restaurants and trains. The trains don't move. Uh, they're just like broken down trains. And then everything is in a train. Uh, like... Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I went from it's one of those towns where there used to be an industry. There used to be an industry there, and now it's just a fucking ghost town. And they're like, yeah. "Look, we used to make things here." It's like me, and then Rusted Roots playing sometimes. Some like like they're <laughs> it's they're awesome. Like, yeah, yeah, that they're playing. Uh, so that that's that's crazy. Um, and then and then oh, I'm on stage last night, and there was a guy with a date with a girl. I'm like, "Oh, are you guys boyfriend and girlfriend?" And the guy goes, "It's debatable." Like, and then she was like, <laughs> she got mad. She's like, I'm like, well, what date is it? She's like, fifth. I go, have you guys had sex yet? He's like, no. So like, like after a fifth date, you're really not sleeping with the person. Right? I mean, if you're not, I mean, if you're not, if, if I'm like anything, he's like, not really. If you take a girl off five times and there's no action, you're just buying her shit. You're not really going on a date at that point. You're just, yeah. like, you're just paying for stuff. You're a sponsor. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah sponsor. you're sponsoring her. Yes. Yeah. Uh, speaking of a guy who's been on lots of dates, Jake Ellerberger is here. Uh, the juggernaut. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite, favorite fighters. Uh, how are you? Me too. Uh, he, 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 uh, Jake doesn't know that his uh, sound's off. 
uh, but that's okay. That's what happens. You get punched in the face a lot. And he's like, he goes, really? Holy shit. How's it going? Jake's the only guy whose cauliflower ear gets worse after fighting. Um, so <laughs> uh, still not working, Jake, my man. Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah. So some reason is like, is there any kind of, are you on mute or, um, cause I see that you're, you're muted. Now you're not muted. Uh, can you hear him, Bill, or is it just me? No. Is he just not talking? Well, he knew. Are you he talking, never, he, he actually okay. doesn't talk that much, but uh, but now he is talking. Uh, well, there was one podcast where, like, the Al Iaquinta, I go, what do you think of Jake Ellenberger? And he's like, uh, I don't know. He's a good guy, I guess. I'm like, he was on, he was on the show. He goes, why, is he fucking there? I'm like, yeah, that's why I asked you. <laughs> so, um, that was, remember that show, Jake? Why don't we just have you nod the whole time? We'll just have you nod. Yeah, can you pantomime? Ask. Can you pantomime some of your greatest knockouts? So, uh, can you just show us how you did them pantomime? Yeah. The fucking knee over Jake Shields was my favorite. That was <laughs> unbelievable. The flying knee on Jake Shields. Holy shit. That was awesome. I mean, yeah. Jake has some power. I mean, he, 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 he besides Woodley, he, he, hurt, he hurt Wonder Boy the most. Uh, who else did he knock out? He knocked out, uh, Jake, who else did you knock out? Pele in eight seconds. Uh, and then he fought Pele, who had beat like Matt Hughes. Pele was like, a, and, but he didn't know who the guy was. Jake didn't. He thought he was he was like the the Mexican janitor. He was Brazilian, but Jake was Mexican. And then Jake just knocked him out in eight seconds. And then his and then his team was like, oh, by the way, that guy was a world champion. That's that's how Jake rolled back in the day. Jake is like being a fan. Of, oh, he's out now. He just knocked himself out. That's how fucking that's how hard he hits. He knocks himself. <laughs> So, well, we at least we got to compliment him a little bit before he before he yeah, disappeared. Yeah, that was actually his best appearance so far in the podcast. Just so you know, that was uh, <laughs> that was the most exciting. So, meanwhile, this guy fucking asked me like ten times to get his guy on this bare knuckle fighter. So I, I give him the he asked me like six times. When's he on? When's he on? When's he on? Can we get him on? I give him the Zoom, and then he sends me the guy's phone number. To, I'm like, bro, I just gave you the info. Like, like you can't speak on behalf of somebody. Now I gotta text this guy. Uh, Jake, are you here? Fuck, I still can't hear Jake. But it's crazy because I can hear everyone but Jake. Like if I couldn't hear you, Bill, I'd be like, maybe this is me. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Unmute yeah. all. That's oh. how bad MMA pays. You can't even afford a computer with audio. Jake, talk. Fuck, man. You think maybe this is you think maybe this is what, like this is you? Maybe this is not like a, like a, a simulation, as they call it. Like, this isn't even happening, this podcast. This is all... Uh, by the way, Jake had seven more kids during the podcast. Like, when I met Jake, he was a virgin. <laughs> he was a virgin. Like, he really... He had not gotten laid. Now, Jake, you're here. I think I can hear him this time. Jake. How about that? Yes. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yes. 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 Damn, how okay. Are, how are you, man? I'm like, I'm like... I'm good, man. How about you? Good, good, good. I'm on my phone, but it's, you know, it's whatever. I just, I was talking, and I'm like, well, fuck, no one can hear me, so. Jake, anyway, we're good, Jake's man. such a nice guy that, like, I was driving back from Vegas at night. It was midnight. No, from Arizona. And I called Jake, and he knew I was driving, and he stayed on the phone with me for three hours. Like, he, I, I, he, he's like, oh, you still driving? <laughs> yeah, and he, he wouldn't go to the phone with me. Like, I, I was like, yo, I got to go, because I felt like I was, I was annoying him. I was asking him everything. And he was like, that's the kind of guy Jake is. <laughs> Jake's one of those, if I had a dead body, no, I was like, Jake, I got to get rid of this body. He'd be one of the guys I call. He'd probably have three of his own, you know, somewhere, but that's how good of a friend you are. So, uh, so Jake, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks. No, it was, it was, it's always entertaining. So we were just telling stories. It was fun. <laughs> so you said that you're like leaving uh, this week. Where, where are you going? Oh, we just got a little, little family getaway plan. So, yeah. Okay. We're going to hit a. Yeah, take, take the kids out, you know, get out of town for a little bit, so. Yeah, you never add, you, he never gives you any details about what's going on. Like, like, like the worst yeah, is- sounds very cloak and dagger. If Jake would lose a fight, I wouldn't hear from him for like three weeks. And then at five in the morning, I, he would call me and he'd be like, I'm at a casino, I'm okay, and just hang up. Like, that's how he, like, in the middle of Nebraska, he'd be by himself playing fucking like, you know, three card Monty or something, whatever the fuck he plays at the casino. Uh, great. I think, I think, I think we're all frozen now. Is everybody frozen? So, uh, so Jake, uh, you've been training over. So, we, so one, of the things we're talking, one of the things we're talking about is that you've been training over at uh, extreme couture, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how's that going? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How's that going? No, it's been good. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. You know, it's funny. I've, I mean, I've known all, a lot of those guys for, for a long time, but uh, it's, it's, it's fun. There's a lot of young, a lot of studs, a lot of up-and-comers, but uh, no, I mean, I, I love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forever be training, so, because... It's just it's it's good good to be around good people, you know, and, and they got a good dynamic there. So, is there any chance of a comeback, Jake? Oh, not right. No chance of a comeback. No, not right now. I mean, every but when you're out there and you're and you're you're competing against a real stud and you get the better of them, don't you kind of think like, wait a second, I still got it? <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, I mean that. Ha- yeah, that happens more. You know, I, I I'm going with with good guys, you know, but. And, and yeah, and I, I feel great. But you know, for me, it's just like you got to continue to, you know, what am I? You know, what are you? What are you fighting for? It's like, yeah, there's. Well, what do you? What do you? Are you mostly focusing on on uh, MMA or jujitsu or Muay Thai? Is there an element of the training that you're mostly focused on? Because you're you're you, you're not a black belt yet in jujitsu, are you? No, not no, not not in the gi, huh? But no, Is I've been something you're looking to do. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely finish that. But um, yeah, I've been I've been, I've been kind of. Like, I'd say coaching a little bit, but um, not like uh, you know, I've been MMA training. I shouldn't say I. I, I would say I'm not. I haven't been focusing like a one something specific, but but helping guys like getting ready for fights and stuff, and just it, it's it's been a lot of fun. So I can kind of kind of take the other wear the other hat, you know, as more of a coach. But uh, it's kind of give my insight of what I see. So it's fun. Now, one of the funniest things you told me is that like one day all of a sudden like Dagestan will show up, right? Like 13 random guys from Dagestan that are all killers. <laughs> yeah. And they won't even tell you guys. Uh, they're like, oh, yeah, Ali sent some guys, right? Uh, do you ever get nervous to, like, go with those guys because you don't know who the fuck they are? No, we'll see. Like, wrestling, yeah, exactly. Well, that's a good question. But wrestling, grappling, I'll, I'll go with anybody. But, like, sparring, there's, like, I, I mean, there's a handful of guys I could tell you right now. It's like, we're not going to spar. I will fight because we know that's what's going to happen. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? Like, What's the, what's the point of me sparring? I don't fight. I'm, I'm retired. You know what I mean? Like, I'll move around with guys. We'll go light. We'll, we'll, we'll you know, I'll, show, I'll give them a good look. But it's like, if I'm putting on headgear, like, why am I putting on headgear? Because you're going to try to knock me out. But, no. like, but, didn't, yeah, they, but didn't they tell you, a, you were telling me how, that, like, you had to go with Chimaev the other day, right? Like, Chimaev shows up, and, and they, like, all of a sudden threw you in. The, yeah. Yeah. How did that go? No, he, uh, he's a stud, man. He's, he's, he's incredible. But, uh. Yeah, we, we move around light, like, you know, he knows, he, I, I, I let him know, like, it's, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, re- I'm retired, I'm not fighting, so, but yeah, we'll, we'll move around light, and <laughs> he's, he's, dude, he's, he's good everywhere, though, like, we'll wrestle, we'll grapple, like, dude, it's good, man. But, yeah. so, but, like, Do you ever have the moment of, where, like, you're, you're, go, on. No, go ahead. No, go on. Go I was going to say, we're, you're going light, and all of a sudden, there's a, there's a shot that comes in, and you're like, oh, shit, it's on, and it goes from going light to, like, a pseudo fight. Yeah. You ever have that happen? Uh, it, it used to happen a lot more. Nowadays, not so much. I mean, everybody there's cool. They they all respect me too. So it's like, and, and, and I'll tell them, you can you can, you know light me light me up in the body. Like those guys try to drop me in the body shots all the time. But you know, I'm like, if you're gonna start throwing, if you're gonna start throwing heavies. Like, but no, I mean, everyone's pretty respectful there too. So it's like, you know, you know there there's just. There's there's certain guys you know that you can go hard with, and some guys you just it comes down to who you trust. Like there's there's a couple guys uh, I think that are Russian that want to go hard, and I'm like no, like yeah. I do, uh, with you next time I'm like you know like I I don't fight anymore. You know that right? Like I'm, yeah, they know who I am, and they're like want to go hard. I'm like no, like there's no point. What's the point? But you train yeah. with like Anderson Silva. You train with Dan Henderson. You train with like the best guys, Bisbing, so many champions. They're calling Shemaev like Khabib 2.0, uh, and that he's going to be like the next, the next big thing in MMA. Do you see it? Yeah, I, I would be in a lot of ways. I, 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 I mean, it's it's hard to say. It really is. Like, if I, I don't see many, I don't see any holes in his game. I don't see anywhere like he's going to be exposed. Like they use, like the, they like to use that word exposed. But yeah, he's 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 incredible. I, I I mean, you know, we'll see when he starts facing like the top five, top ten guys. But yeah, from from what I've seen in training, he's he's incredible. He is every bit of what they say. Wow, and that's I mean, I mean, and like I, I like know you because you'll just smile, or you'll say things like, 
I don't know. You never know when the fight happens. Yeah, anything. Yeah, every, everybody's got two hands and two feet. Like you say things like that. Uh, so I, I like know there's like codes, you know, Bill, like when you, when you ask a guy, if he trains with somebody, there's a code of like, how do you think he's going to do? And he goes, well, depends who shows up. That means not good, you know, <laughs> yeah. or, um, <laughs> Or, you know, everybody's got a chance in there. You're like, oh, this dude's fine. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's going to be competitive. It's going to be competitive. That means like... Yeah. 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 yeah, it's going to be competitive means the guy's going to get the shit beaten out of him. Yeah. Uh, or better when, when guys say, I want a war. I want a war. <laughs> For what? I want the easiest guy and get paid the most so I can have a quick night and see you. Like, what are you... I want a war. No, you don't. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know. You don't. You don't think like someone like uh, Diego Sanchez back in the day really didn't want a war. I mean, that guy wanted a war. Well, he's yeah. He's a little different. Different. Uh, different. <laughs> uh, All right. So last night uh, in CFFC, a guy's finger fell off. Did you see what happened, Jake? Bill? I just saw a picture. Okay. So Bill, you didn't see what happened. What happened? So this guy from Russia, and, th- and then if anyone ever doubts who the toughest people in the world are, just watch this. Because the Russian guy didn't even fucking flinch. Like, it was as if, like, the Russian guy, uh, <laughs> like, stubbed his toe. Like, like, like all right, so the guy, the, guy blocks, the guy blocks a head kick. or he, he blocked it, and his finger broke. His finger broke on the block, right? And you kind of see it. Then the other guy, you, you don't really see it, but against the, against the cage, like, he pulled off the guy's finger, which, um, look, I mean, I don't even know if that's just even, not even illegal. I mean, like, if, if you're going to try to, like, yeah. So then the guy's finger got lost in his own glove and they were looking for his finger. They had like, so they stopped the fight in the second round and like they were looking for, I mean, I was, I'm making jokes like, you know, you know, uh, uh, check Bilal Muhammad's eye socket, you know, and Bilal fucking <laughs> gave me a funny meme or like this would never happen to Nick Newell, you know, cause he's got one. All right. But so it was, oh, but yeah, they found his finger in the glove, like in the glove. And then he went to the hospital and they just fucking stabled it back. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, I, I mean, he, what was that? When like when it happened, was he like he didn't seem like he was like no even, like no nothing nothing Jake not Russian they have no expression they're <laughs> just like I lost finger I have no finger <laughs> oh. yeah. I, I dude, I've seen people get mad that like that there's no ice and water at a restaurant have a bigger fucking reaction or like <laughs> hey like hey hey you gave me decaf like like literally like there i've seen people go uh this seat doesn't move back on the plane like like yeah. flip out the dude's fucking finger was gone not even like, oh, yeah. like the whole finger was gone and oh, yeah. when my grand my grandpa when we when we have breakfast he'll throw a huge he'll throw a fit if his hash browns are done they're not extra crispy he'll be like do those look extra crispy to you and he'll like i'm like now, 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 Lugie's coming, so that's cool. But, <laughs> but yeah, a finger like that's a, that's unbelievable. So it started. It got caught in the fence. Is that how it started? No, it just the guy kicked it and it fucking broke. And then they were like fighting, and the other guy was like, I guess he maybe he went to grab the guy's hand or something, and the guy fucking removed the other guy's finger. Like, I don't wow. even. I don't understand how that's. Someone said, just, people were like, does he have lupus? You know, it was like all kinds of. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make an Angela Magana getting finger joke somewhere, but I, I couldn't <laughs> fucking, I couldn't write it. I, I could, but I was like, I went to that well. That are, are most, well. But everyone's like pretty cool with you roasting though. Like they don't take, you know, I'd say most people, right? Most fighters are cool though. With- most people get it. Yeah. The only people that get mad are the ones that get offended on behalf of the other fighter. They fucking, oh. you know, they go, that's fucked up to make fun of a guy with one arm. Meanwhile, the guy with one arm is laughing. It's like, or yeah. don't make Angela Magana jokes. Magana's like, please stop. Please don't stop making jokes. Don't listen to you. It's like, <laughs> it's like, okay. yeah. it's, it's so bizarre. Uh, anyway, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, all right. So also uh, more MMA news and then we'll get into some other stuff. But uh, Leon Edwards is fighting Nate Diaz. Um, everyone says this fight makes no sense, but we're cool with it. That's pretty much the, yeah. uh, I mean, Nate Diaz could fight the cold and everyone would fucking want to watch it. The guy is yeah. literally just, it's going to be, has he ever been in a boring fight in his life? You know, he, he doesn't know how to be boring. Um, at that, 
that being said, does he beat Leon Edwards, Jake? Man, I, I don't know. Nate's one of those guys, too, though. Like, you can put him, put him up with about anybody, and he's going to draw. I mean, people want to see him fight. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting fight. I mean, Bill? Oh, is it, is it, is it a headline fight, Adam? Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's yeah a, yeah if yeah it's yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah, yeah 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 it's uh it, um the info is wrong uh yeah I'm, I'm trying to get my Wi-Fi better it's fucking um yeah it's an interesting <laughs> oh fight. it's five rounds it's five rounds it's, five it's round call me an event call yeah, me an event, event. Round. yeah I mean look Andy I mean Nick Diaz, you're right though Nate Diaz looked amazing against Anthony Pettis I mean he just beat up Anthony Pettis and then Pettis has looked yeah. good since then so you can't even say he beat a shot Pettis um yeah. and then he went out and got shellac by masvidal who looked horrible against usman and leon edwards was beating Bilal muhammad before he rammed his fucking hand into the guy's eye i don't know why he did that i mean it wasn't now people are just cheating to cheat they're like winning and they fucking knee people in the head it used to be like when you were lose you would do a fucking illegal move yeah. now people are winning and they're poking people uh i i just think also that's just two years off maybe and fucking I don't know, brain fart or yeah. not used to it or whatever. Uh, by the way, th just a little fun fact. Fun fact. That this is how much people love Nate Diaz. It's going to be the first five-round non-title co-main event fight in UFC wow. history. Wow. They gave him like a five-round fight just because they fucking love him. There's no reason for the fight. They don't even have the, the BMF title on the line. Yeah, and what, like is Nate, and, what, and like, what is Nate ranked? And Nate's rank, like, God, probably, he's got to be up there, right? Seven, eight, nine? I mean, what's Nate? Is Rand? Nate? He can't be in the top ten. He can't be in the top ten, can he? No, I don't. I don't think he is. But dude, Nate Diaz is. He hasn't fought in like eighteen months. Dude, he's so funny. I told you for the MMA awards. I texted him like, "Hey, will you present an award this year?" And he goes, "Fuck yeah, I want to win one too." And he he wasn't even nominated. Like he hadn't even fought. And like so, then I I was like, "Hey, can we give Nate Diaz an award uh, just for being Nate Diaz?" And that they 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 didn't bite on it. But like, just have like the Nate Diaz award to go to Nate Diaz every year. That would be like, uh, yeah. But yeah, so um, hey. so initially, just to touch, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was saying like initially, I was kind of leaning towards Leon, but I don't know, man. Diaz is a uh, plus being a five round fight. I, I don't know. I'm not confident in my in, in Leon for five rounds. I don't know. But you're a big better, Jake. Everyone knows you're a big better. Uh, they call you Jake the Shark out in Vegas. Um, Alleged. <laughs> so, so you're allowed to bet, if you're in the UFC, you're allowed to bet on UFC fights. Can you bet on your own fights if you're in the UFC? Uh, you can certainly bet on UFC fights. I, I uh, your own? I don't know. That's that's a gray area. <laughs> he would bet on guys certainly. he would train with. He would, bet, he would train with guys and go, this fucking guy's not going to win. Uh, you know, like, he, he would, like, <laughs> he, he, he would place the bet after practice. Like, walk, like, like, in the middle of the fucking training session, he would, he would be like, hey, like he would take the guy down and then go, hey, put this, you know, am I right? This didn't happen? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean, when I get an insight, yeah, I make a little bit of a... <laughs> is that called insider, isn't that called insider trading? <laughs> is that illegal? Insider training. Right. I like it. Sports like betting it. is. I don't. Know. All right. So, uh, all right. So, John Jones says he's not going to take eight to ten million dollars. He says, he, uh, according to him, he wants fifty million. That's what people are saying. Or, uh, or he said eight to ten is not enough to fight um, in Ganu. Uh, this is tough because the UFC can't lose John Jones. John Jones is the best fighter, arguably of all time, in the UFC right now, especially with, keep, with Khabib yep. retiring. And if he goes to Bellator or he goes to one, they're going to say they have the best fighter in the world. And that's not good for the UFC. At the same time, if, if, you know, they can't give a guy $50 million if they're not going to make it. You know? and, and then that just, all that's going to mean is they're going to pay everyone else less. You know, they, I don't understand like, why they don't just give them – more pay-per-view points. I'm not a business guy, but it would seem like that would be the thing to do. Uh, is okay. I mean, at, they did the numbers, and he's not one of the like. I think they McGregor, Khabib, Anderson Silva all did better numbers than him as a main event guy. That's what, according to somebody. I'm not sure if these. I, I didn't, you know, fact check that guy's hmm. stats. 
Uh, and John Jones well, is also a, a liability. He's, a, he's also a liability because, you know, they had, they've had yeah. to literally move fucking events. That being said, I would like to see get him get whatever he wants and be happy uh, because he deserves it. I mean, you don't go 29, whatever record is, and be the best fighter in the world. You should get paid whatever you want, really. Uh, Jake, you're a, you're a yeah. great fighter. What do you think? It, it is a tough one. I mean, even just to add, like, the, the pay-per-view points, I mean, it's it, – it, it makes sense, but, like, you got to understand, like, it's, it's coming from – the UFC is like it's still coming out of their revenue. It's like you know what what what, what are we gonna pay him? What is, it's hard because he also hasn't fought a heavyweight yet. He hasn't fought a heavyweight. You know, obviously, I have no objection for him fighting for the title at heavyweight. I, he's the greatest of all time, as, you know, as a light heavyweight. So there's an argument there, but yeah, I don't. I mean, <laughs> it's tough, man. I, like you want eight to ten up front to fight, twelve to fit, you know, whatever it is. But I don't know. I just I, I've heard kind of he's been tough to deal with from the inside, but. But again, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, I, I would like to see him, you know, the, to be some sort of, you know, you got to give and take a little bit. I, I, I know they won't let him go. I do know that. But uh, yeah, well, hopefully they can find a happy medium, you know. Bill, thoughts? Well, I mean, if you were afraid to get your ass kicked by Nganu, you would ask for $50 million. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's the move of someone. <laughs> I mean, like, what? He's, he's, he's not going to find where I live. But um, it is the move of someone who's like, you're like, fuck, I don't want to fight this guy. At this point, he looks almost invincible in Ghana, right? Yeah. And I think that he's like, well, what do you do? You, you make a financial statement that if you lose, at least you got $50 million. I don't know. I, I think it's kind of like, but, I, I, mean, I think there's, it's fear-based. That's my feeling. I, but I wouldn't yeah, like is ten million is not enough. Ten million is I mean, what's I know fifty million is a lot more than ten million, it's five times more. But ten million is a lot of fucking money. I mean well, Yeah, you buy so much coke with that. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, but he's been getting paid I don't I don't know what exactly, but a lot of money to fight to recite you know, at like two oh five recycling. It's just like, like he's getting paid a lot of money. Yeah. And, and Bill, he has a point. I mean, Chael did a piece on it yesterday, too. And he was saying the same thing. He's like, if, if that's a fight, like, do you really want the fight? If that's something like that fight, you're going to ask for something ridiculous. Because, you know, the UFC is going to be like, like, no, no chance, no chance. But, yeah, if, if we're going to, you know, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, does he want it? Yeah. It's, does he want to play the game? It looks like it. You know what I mean? And we'll see. So what do you think happens but now? Also Jay, uh, Jake and Bill, I'm actually curious. Who, who do you think wins that fight? Bill, you didn't like that before. What was that, Bill? I was just saying, has Dana White ever been bullied into a number like that before no. by a fighter? No, no, no. Yeah. But what do you think happens in that fight, Jake? Oh man, <laughs> it's 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 honestly it's. it's And I know Francis' this last fight, but I was like, you have to fight him the perfect fight and be mistake free for 25 minutes. So I think John can certainly win that fight. Obviously, he's exceptional wrestling and on the ground. Um, things where he can take Stipe out of his comfort zone, but Stipe, or I'm sorry, Francis, but Francis is one of those guys, if he touches you, you're going to sleep. Like he's just got that incredible power, that incredible gift of power. But I, I don't know. Again, I would like to lean towards Jones, but man, we haven't seen him at heavyweight either. We don't, I don't know. He could, he could, he could be, he could get melted in. I mean, I, he's, he's slower. You know what I mean? He's not as, maybe he's not in as good a shape. I don't know. Maybe he's now not you, as agile, but maybe he's fast. I don't know. Now you, now you train with uh, Nganu, right? Well, I, in the same room, I wouldn't see it. Not with him. Yeah. That's. You guys didn't, you, but, yeah. you, you, but no, you told me you actually spar with him. Me? No, I haven't. No. Oh, you haven't? Oh, okay. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. I got it. I got it. We have uh, Elvin <laughs> Leon Brito is with us. Elvin Leon Brito is ranked second in bare knuckle boxing. Uh, he was eight and eight in MMA, but he looked like... Uh, uh, nine and eight. Nine and eight. Sorry. <laughs> my bad. But he, he didn't seem like he wanted Sorry. to be there. He was like, you know what? I just want to beat people up without gloves. 
And uh, it seems like you've you found yourself. You found your calling, man. Yeah. You're fucking killing yeah, it. I, I love MMA, you know. Yeah, I never felt like I didn't want to be in MMA. It was just um, this was an opportunity I got presented at, at, at the right time. And I was like, hey, yeah, I'll try it out. And no, I fell in love with no, it, you, know, you, said, you said guys with gloves. Because yeah. you said guys with gloves are big pussies. And, I, and uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, uh, it, it, ain't, it ain't bare knuckle. A lot of people, a lot of glove fighters have the misunderstanding. They think they're going to take the glove. Yeah. All right. Well, that was him. Great. That was awesome. Well, that was a great interview as well. This fucking Wi-Fi is brutal. It's brutal. I fu- I, can't, I hate it. Well, I think, it, I think he I was like, go- was he like zip in Costa Rica? <laughs> <laughs> he was in Puerto Rico. He was in Puerto Rico. Hang on, what's it? <laughs> Oh fuck! Every, everybody's leaving. This is this is the best podcast. I'm sorry, guys. I I, I tried. I tried Wait, to do you and my cat. Uh, dude, yeah. Just, I'm gonna talk to Bill's cat. Uh, so yeah. So uh, ho- hopefully Elvin comes back. Uh, I don't, I don't know what happened uh, there. Um, so oh, here he is. So now, did you, now did you know that the fight watching Engano train? Did you think that was gonna happen with Stipe? I did, yeah. I mean, especially a rematch. You know what I mean? Like, you, you got to be mistake free against a guy that like like Ninganu. But uh, and I just you know, <clears throat> in five, in twenty five minutes, you know, you got to fight a perfect fight and, and be mistake free. So, and being a rematch, I was like, you know, and he got, he's made some adjustments, and uh, I was definitely liking the odds in that fight. But I All mean, right. Steve Steve is undoubtedly the greatest heavyweight. No, there's no there's no question. Yeah, no. Is there gonna I, be a rubber match? Is there gonna be number three? No, no. We'll see. I mean, there's a. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I would certainly tune in, but yeah, I, I would like to see Ngannou versus uh, uh, man, what's his name from Houston? Oh, Derek Lewis. Lewis. No, Derek Lewis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who wouldn't like to watch that fight? Uh, anyone yeah, who watched the first one. Uh, everybody who watched the first time they fought. It was the, probably the worst fight of all time. That's the only thing about that fight, though. It was so bad. Uh, was it really? Dude, they didn't throw a punch. <laughs> it was a staring contest. Like, it was right uh, after Ngannou <laughs> lost. Uh, I think I think Elvin Brito came on and then lost. Oh, man, I, I got to apologize to this guy. Now he probably thinks that I really think that uh, that he thinks the bare knuckle people are uh, people that work well are pussies. I was kidding. Um, he's calling in from Puerto Rico. Yeah, the first fight was terrible, <clears throat> Bill. It was arguably the worst heavyweight fight of all time. They were both scared of each other's power so there was like no fight there was like no yeah. punches thrown yeah it was brad yeah 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 dang all right man this fucking wi-fi sucks uh man this wi-fi sucks so jake how's uh how's uh engaged life everything's good uh i was gonna ask you a question real quick sure what do you <laughs> i i, I hear... here we go i, I want to hear th- uh, are we back yeah, we're back. No, we're I know. <laughs> are we live? We are live. We are live. Okay. <laughs> right, Elvin, one sec. Jake, uh, Jake, what was your question? No, it's... This Wi-Fi. That's Paul. Group. On who, Jake? Askren Paul? Is Paul? Oh, yeah, think... Askren and Paul. Askren and Paul. Uh, well, from what I know, you know, like, Askren's a, like, he's a phenomenal athlete. He's a world class athlete. He's not that great of a boxer. Um... Mm-hmm. Jake Paul, he's had the luxury that he he he's so rich that he could just dedicate himself to just training. And it looks like he's been training a lot of boxing. It looks like he's really looks like he's been training with some really good guys. He looks he moves good. He 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 looks better than fucking Ben Ben hitting the bag. I'll tell you that shit. And and, yeah. and hitting the pads and he moves better and he looks better fighting when you know what I'm saying than Ben did with with his hands. So it's like I I think Jake is gonna surprise a lot of people in this fight unless. You know, it, the fight gets ugly because, you know, like I said, um, uh, Ben Ashton is also a, a world-class athlete, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's just – if he if – he... Now, uh, Elvin, are you in a rooster farm or something? What, what, <laughs> There's a certain on? part. Oh, yeah, this is my backyard. I'm, I'm poolside. Wow. Wow. That, <laughs> that, is the, that is the coolest thing ever. So you're in Puerto Rico, right? Yeah. Wow, that's yeah, that that all my roots and stuff. That's beautiful. Man. <laughs> You're living a life, bro. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm living a good life. Elvis, right I know yeah. you're very, I have a question. I go the John Donaher Death Squad team down there, Gordon Ryan and all those guys who train. Oh, there. there's some new jujitsu guys, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I heard of those guys in San Juan. No, I've never been up there. I, I got to go visit them one day. I heard they're really good, you know, so I got to go visit them. I mean, I got, I mean, I've been doing MMA for a long time. I got a pearl button in, in jiu-jitsu and I got a brown button judo, so I've been in the game for a while. I don't love wrestling and stuff. I, I, I really hate, used to hate wrestling when I first started because I was a boxer, but I, I, I was, you know, I had to force myself to do it and, you know, I ended up really liking it, you know. But this bare knuckle stuff is, it was nice. It's more my stuff. It's always fit me. I've always been a kind of person. Like I said, there's something about Boxing is like they were saying about uh, Ben and, and, and Jake. Uh, there's something about stand up, especially bare knuckle, where the, the athleticism isn't front burner in the first couple rounds, it's mm. in the back burner. It, it's not till, it, it, you know, that the athletic, because it doesn't matter how much you put your guy, he's punching in the face. The guy keeps punching in the face, you're just pushing for him to knock your ass out, you know? Because <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, uh, unless yeah. he gets tired real fast, but if the guy's a good fighter, He's not, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not, the, like me, I'm not the most, I'm like, I, I'm strong and I, I'm athletic, but I'm not like a super athletic dude, the back push and shit like that, and strong and squatting 300 and some pounds, but I can fight, you know, and, and, and it's, so athleticism doesn't cut it for striking sports, where in grappling and MMA, you're able to use that, you know, that's in the front burner, you're able to use it. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. that fight. <laughs> now, Elvin, it seems like a lot of boxers come No, but that's what I love about bare knuckle. I feel like a lot of boxers come into bare knuckle and they don't realize it's a whole different art form. Like Paulie Malignaggi. Oh uh, yeah, it's a wake up call. I love the wake up call. You know, like I've been I've been BKFC since BKFC three, and man, I and I go to almost all the shows too. And uh, I love the wake up call. You know, a lot of veterans come in. They're like, oh, this is I'm gonna be. They always come in talking. I'm gonna be the best in here. You know, and and then they don't answer the the the, the ten count because it's just so raw. It's so painful. It's so real. It's so different. And your hands hurt if you, if you, you know, if you, and this is not like if you're a big dumb glue, like it's not the greatest place to be at because it can only go so far like that. You have to be, you have to be a smart, you have to be a warrior, gladiator to be able to really go far in this game. But even like, uh, ask you a question, Van, Elvin. hold on, what's that? Bill, even like Paige Van Zandt, who's like, who's like, she came in, yeah, she's more athletic, she, she, yeah, she's more athletic than Britain. She got shown from a better team. Um, She's a better, I mean, she's more athletic. She's stronger. She's faster. <laughs> Just because of a better team. But that doesn't matter because there's a fight. The, the front burner in bare knuckle is fighting prowess. It's how, a, how, fa how your fight game is and how fast you're able to, to, to uh, you know, get it going. You know, how, how fast you're able to get it going. If you can't get your game going, you're done. Bare knuckle is, is, is high stakes. Any punch, it's over. You know, you get hit a nerve. Get in the wrong spot, you know. Get in the back, get put on stilts. Yo, anything can go south real bad. Or you could be winning, which I've seen a lot. Um, the the girl fight in Knuckle Mania fight of the night was a perfect example where where the girl was actually just she was on her way to put the other girl away, but then her hands got tired, and then the fight got ugly. And when the fights get ugly, man, it's it's painful. You want to see an ugly fight? But, uh, Caleb and and, and and Caleb Harris versus. Jim Allers, that was painful. I was there. Uh, I fought that day too. I fought uh, Palomino, but Jim was hitting him, you know. And then the hand fatigue starts to set in third, fourth round. And man, that fight got grueling, you know. And I'm sure, and a lot of people don't understand that, unlike MMA or bare knuckle, like this, it's it's just a different. There's a rawness to the sport, and it's just striking. And like your athleticism, like it's not going to escape you. From, like there's no way you're not going to be able to use a takedown. You're not going to be able to hold. You're not going to be able to be strong. Like being stronger than the other guy helps if you can hit him. You know, almost everybody that I fight is stronger than me. And, you know, everybody's like, how hard did they hit? I'm like, I don't know. They never, never, never really be able to get a good punch on me. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you if they hit hard or not. You know, I hit them pretty damn hard. But uh, it's, it's, a different, it's a different sport. It's just 10 minutes. It's lightning fast. I would say it's like boxing on steroids or like high stakes poker. Like, you know, it's just super, super high stakes. And a lot of the boxers, they, they come in, they think in the – because when you box, I know because I come from a boxing background, you come in and you work your game because it's a long game. You know what I'm saying? You come in and you work your game, you feel your guy out, you know, you tell, and that, you know, by the time you do that, the fight's over in Bernal, you know? Like, it's over. You know, 10 minutes, boom. So, um, you don't have time to feel the other guy out. As soon as that first bell rings, you got to go. 
you got to get to work. I'm not saying go out there and make a mess, but like you don't have time to feel the other guy out. You have you, you have time to either be better than the other guy or not. You know, you're either better than the other guy. Your timing's better. Um, you you might have a round or two. I, it always takes me about a round or two to get my my opponent's timing down. But once once I got your timing down, you know, it's never it's never lay back. It's always turn it up, 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 and then the fight ends. You know, before you know it, the fight's over. Now a lot of guys that I fight, they leave frustrated. Uh, yeah, yeah, Bill, what were you saying? You know, I've I've never really seen a lot of bare knuckle fights. I have a couple questions. One is like. Obviously, you can't do elbows at all, right? No, 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 no. Is, everyone, is it just designed for everyone to be a headhunter, or can you get that like liver shot? That like, oh, no, body shots are out? vicious. It's striking. I mean, if you, you should check out Bare Knuckle. Bare Knuckle is like I said. I, I love MMA. I, I, I love the quest. I love doing all the different martial arts and everything. But this this is so different, so raw. You know, um, and it's. Uh, what was the question again? Sorry. Well, like, you know how, like, Boz, Boz Rootin used to do that, like, Oh, yeah, the, bo shot. the body shots like are, you be surprised without a glove, with bone on bone, how easy it is for a professional fighter who has, who, who's stronger than a regular person with his, you just break your bones, you know, if you get hit on a clavicle, you just break your clavicle, you just break your rib, one hit, it only takes one hit to break your rib, boom, it hits you right, boom, rib's gone, you know, um, I, I, when I when I uh, when I fought Palomino, you know, I wasn't even hurt from the fight. I mean, one time right on the tip of the rib, it still bothers me. You know, it's just it, it's how it is. You know, um, my opponent, his ribs bothering him from the last fight. It's like it's you get. I got punched in the clavicle. See, that's why I like my first fight. It was a fight of five rounds. I got punched in the clavicle by by Harris Stevenson, and Harris Stevenson is a huge 165er. He's probably close to 180. He punched me right in the clavicle. That hurt for like two months. You know, it's just from get it was just, and I literally when I got out, I told my coach, I'm like, dude, real. And you watch a lot of veterans come in, they get punched in the eye, and they're like, oh, you know, and 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 they're expecting the ref to do something. And the ref's like, what happened? I got punched in the eye. Like one, two. It's like, dude, it's uh, knuckle, dude. You, it's like, oh, I hurt my hand. Oh, your hand hurts. One, two. It's like, fuck. So who do you want to fight next? <laughs> I say like. <laughs> I'll so fight Elvin, anybody. So, Elvin, who do you want to fight next? I'll fight anybody. As long as they put that belt in front of me. Especially if they put the belt in front of me. I'll... Got it. Uh, Got it. They want to fight me now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm ready to go. You know? Like, I'm ready to go. Well, thank uh, you. I, I've, I've been ready. I've, I've been training with my coach. Yep. So, I've been ready to just uh, – I've been just staying. I, I'm not going full, like, a training camp, but I'm still training with my coach. Can I stay strong? And, and I'm not going to let myself – fall out of line because I'm going to come right back at it, you know, trying to be champions. Well, it was an honor to have you on the podcast, Elvin. Thank you so much. And uh, take care. Keep it up, brother. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Check Thank out BKFC you. when you get a chance, man. The sure. real sport passes growing for a reason. For sure, yeah. man. We will. So right, you guys got, have a good day. You too. We got Tay Edwards here. T. Edwards, who I met last week in Arizona. I did a show. He came with his beautiful, I think, ex-wife, but now wife again. Uh, so no, just dating again. Oh, they're just dating again. So he, <laughs> he, 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 he got a, and this girl smoking hot, and then she's a nice woman. She like rescues dogs, and then, uh, and then he married her, and then they got divorced. And he's like, you know what? Bring her back. Uh, and now they're back together. Um, I'm not sure exactly if that's how it went, but uh, I think it was like I think it was I think it was a good move. I think it was a good move. Uh, T. Edwards, who. Uh, I was I was looking at some of your stuff, man. You were a Virginia State champion, right? Wrestling. Yeah. That's that's pretty impressive. I mean, yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, that's where, where, where in Virginia? In where in Virginia? Or college? High school? Uh, I, so I I was in high school in Virginia, and where? then uh, I went to uh, Cox, Virginia Beach. Okay, I was at TC Williams, so that's why I'm asking. In oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen a couple of the guys out there. Um, but then I came back my senior year, wrestled at ODU with, with Steve uh, my senior year after I went to ASU. So, wrestled Virginia there as well. Yeah, and then you went – and then and in college you were ranked ninth in the country at one point. Uh, you went to um, – you went to junior – where, where did you go? Did you go to ASU first or ASU second? I went to ASU first. I did, I did three years at ASU, and then my senior year I came back to ODU. Uh, to old, how, come, how come you left uh, ASU to go to uh, ODU? 
Too much partying, right? I've heard about ASU. Uh, that played that played a big factor. Lots of partying. Very distracted. Um, long story short, there's a thing called the Undie Run at ASU. Uh, they used to have it. It was uh, like a you see like the Naked Mile from like the the Greek movies essentially. Yeah. Uh, so it, there, there's that. There's like a big uh, like dance rave before the Undie Run at the at the the rec center. Um, so everybody comes. They they, they come drunk and they run dances. And there's a, a big mosh pit that always kind of breaks out. Uh, long story short, me and some teammates uh, got into a fight with some people, and it got recorded and viral. And I got kindly asked to leave the university because we got in a fair amount of uh, trouble from the local news channels, and it, it got put on like Taj Point Zero and like some of those like uh, nice. those, Wait, you the, uh, those Wait, you got a fight in your underwear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you, if you put it that way, and, and, then, you, and then you put other guys and in I, their underwear too. I mean, when you think about it, it it's 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 in my wheelhouse. Like coming from wrestling, it's not really that that strange, you know. Especially going into fighting now, where I'm essentially in in my underwear. It's it was actually foretelling of my future so yeah was know, it like a race train and be a now, UFC fighter now was it guys like saw that you were like packing because you're black and they were like whoa and then they were like they got mad at you so then they want they jumped you and then yeah. you had to yourself? <laughs> no the it's funny the the headline the headline that I got put out there was ASU wrestlers uh assault uh like gay guy they they, they, they thought the guy was gay they thought we was like a hate crime oh. which was not the case um you guys were all gay. I, I don't know the full story. I got, I, it's a what? what were you, were, was it like all of you guys were gay? So it's not really a hate crime if it's Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, no. so <laughs> it's not, it's not, I think it's still a hate crime if you, I don't know. I look so it's a guy who had really sexy underwear and they're like, look at that underwear. He's got to be gay. Well, no, no, he was, so one, I had on, I had on Batman underwears. <laughs> the guy was like, he was like six, five. He was like this huge, like 300 pound dude. And he, he had his shirt on like he didn't take all of his clothes off so this the, the narrative was that we were fighting this guy because he wouldn't take his shirt off and we were like that's that's gay so we <laughs> we fought him which is not i don't know how they came up i don't know how they came up with that but what what i understand is i i got there my teammate was getting into a fight with this guy my teammate he was like a 49 pounder he's getting into this fight with this massive guy and I was like, what the fuck's happening? They're like, oh, Carlos is getting in a fight. And I was like, fuck that shit. Like, I'm not about to square up with this fucking behemoth of a man. So I circled around, found a good angle, and I, I sucker punched the shit out of him, which, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not, it's not a fucking, you know, we're not getting paid. So it's a street right. fight. So I fucking hit him. And then everybody was like, oh, shit. Because, you know, he dropped him, whatever. And then, like, the, the crowd ran in, and they continued the dance party, and it was over. And, like, that's all I knew about it. For like a week, like we went about our day. The we guy had was laying party. down there. Never guys, heard about like, it. Were you guys dancing over him? Was he laying down there and you guys danced over well, him? Well, I if if you see the video, like you can't really tell. Like the, the guy gets hit, he falls. <laughs> the crowd like runs in. Everyone starts like chanting and doing ASU shit. And then like the video cuts off, and then we all went about the rest of our day. Like it's there was like six fights that night. Like it wasn't yeah. like an, an uncommon thing. It was, it was a mosh pit. Like people were fighting constantly. So like, we continued about our day, and then a week later, they were like, "Bro, did you see that?" Uh, uh, that yeah, video they got. Posted. Yeah. And I was like, "What video?" And they were like, "This might they they put you on like a bunch of websites, and then that <laughs> spiraled from there." So it was now, bullshit. <laughs> now, now your coach Zeke Jones, who's like a three-time national champion, the guy's like, uh, you know, a really serious guy. When he brings you in, and you tell him that you got into a fight in your underwear during the undie run, and now you're not going to be the eighth-ranked guy in the country. What was that conversation like? So, so Zeke wasn't there when I was at ASU. Uh, Sean Charles was the head coach. Uh, so Zeke got there like a couple years after that. Um, Charles was the head coach. At the time, as I wasn't ranked eighth until I got to ODU. I think I was like maybe top 20 at ASU. Um, but pretty, pretty much they were like, hey, our hands are tied. Like, like they – like this, the video thing got, like people were, they thought it was a hate crime. They thought like, they, they really thought we got in a fight because the guy was gay and we were like just beating up people for no reason. So they were like sending messages to like the Dean and stuff saying like, this is unacceptable. Like you gotta kick these guys out. Like they're, 
you know, gender bias or whatever the fuck. Like, they made it into this big ordeal, and, like, the news ran with it. And they, they, they pitched it as, like, we, we jumped some guy. Cause, and I was like, no, bro. Like, I showed up. There's a big guy fighting my teammate. That's not yeah. how I roll. And I was like, fuck him. And then I went about my day. Like, it I mean, wasn't. Why would like, you beat up a gay guy for not taking off his shirt? Like, wouldn't that be the opposite? I don't know. People off? are <laughs> people are stupid, Adam. I don't know why they thought this was the case, but the news thought it would it would sell more, I guess, if that was the story. So that's what they ran right. with. Okay. And, so, so, then, so then you yeah. all right. So then you go to ODU. You, uh, you you did very good in wrestling. You made the national tournament. Now you're fighting. Uh, you go, you make it also on Dana White's contender. It's what, that's when I first came. And uh, you knocked the guy out quickly. It was one punch. Uh, he was out. And then you're in the, in the octagon and you sign the contract for Dana. Like, that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Like, you, you knocked him out and then you put your hand out and signed it yourself. Bill, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was pretty badass, T. Oh. I missed the last 10 seconds. I said, it was, pretty, you're, you're I said it was pretty badass when you signed the contract yourself after knocking that guy out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think that could have went any better. Um, I mean, we, had, we had to watch some film on the guy. I kind of knew what, what his strengths were and kind of I think what he was going to anticipate for me. So we kind of just baited him into like a few level changes, made, made him think we were going to try to wrestle with him. And, uh, you know, he – for a second and we, we came up the top and just landed a clean overhand and it you know i i don't like to try to talk highly too highly of myself but like if, if i catch somebody clean with the right hand like very few people are still standing after so uh we caught him we caught him on the button and i was like yeah he's he's not getting up after this and yeah no, it was, I was like walk-off. oh we gotta it was a walk-off it was a fucking yeah <laughs> it, was, it was badass uh then your first yeah. two fights didn't go that great in the ufc i'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you get, but you know, the, the this first fight went, the second fight against Dennis Bermudez, you were winning that fight in the first round. Uh, and then yeah. you, what happened? You just gassed. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a reason for that. Um, I have a, a medical condition that we don't, we don't talk about a whole lot just so people don't know about it and like exploit it. So, but long story short, uh, it, that came into play during the fight and there's really not much I can do about it during that time. Like I've like people, people will see the fight or they'll see me compete and they go, Oh, like, you know, he gasses or, Oh, like, you know, he's, he, whatever. And it's, it, that's not the case. Like I'm in, I'm in very good shape. If you, if you, if you ever come to the lab, like I'll, I'll do 10, 12, five minute rounds with, you know, all the killers that are at the lab. Like it's not that I have a cardio problem. I, I, I have a degree in several certifications in strength conditioning. Like I'm, I know how to train appropriately there's just other factors at play that I just don't have control over. So if, if things kind of go down that, that path, it's just, I'm just in a bad spot and I either have to try to pull something out of my ass and, you know, get the fight to be over with, or, you know, it's just going to be like, if if you watch the Bermuda's fight, you kind of see at some point, like, like, Oh, he just kind of stopped doing a whole lot. And then like, it's not that I was like, 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 I mean, he, he was, he was winning and dominating obviously, but like, if you see it, like I'm still protecting myself. I'm still being like intelligent. I, I just can't do a whole lot for those reasons. So, yeah. um, can I ask you a question yeah. to you about, <laughs> all right. So Bill, what was your question? I was just asking him like what his next fight looked like. Oh, no, no, no. It was, it was right after he talked about the gassing out. Uh, he says he has a medical condition. That's yeah. What I dropped out. Uh, sorry, T can you repeat that? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, quick recap. Um, so long story short, I, I don't care what, what casual fans thought like about my, my lifestyle, my laziness, the people close to me kind of know what my situation is. Um, I don't make it well known because it is a, uh, a weak spot that could be exposed. Um, so we just train around it and don't really bring it up. Like maybe after I'm, I'm all said and done, I'll let people know retrospectively, this is what I was working through. But if I bring it up, um, we've got a similar situation in college where people kind of found out uh, what was happening. And then their, their approach to, to fighting me became a little bit different. Um, and, and it makes like my, it makes my day harder. It makes my career harder. So uh, I'm less concerned about what people think about my training and preparation and more concerned about, you know, winning fights and making sure I can, you know, capitalize on this, this sport to the best of my abilities. 
Now, now, you, now you made it to the top. You made it to the UFC, which was like you're like in the one point one percent of the one percent. Um, I take it you probably, you got cut from the UFC. Are you gonna try to come back to Bellator LFA one to get back to the UFC? Like, what's the what's the plan? Yeah, I mean, so uh, they're all on the table, um, honestly. And I, I, like, I I I don't see myself doing like the regional circuit, like LFA. And I think I think they're they're a great opportunity. Um, I think I know my capabilities, what I'm worth, quote unquote, um, and like where I stand. I, I think that the things that happen in the UFC, there, there are, are reasons and explanations. Um, I think those fights go a lot differently um, with, with a couple tweaks, um, like not to make excuses. Both those fights I had like less than three weeks, four weeks of camp. Um, I was on military orders before the first fight. And I was out in Virginia for like four, no, six, six, seven weeks, like not at a gym, um, you know, doing military shit. And then we, we got back and we had like four weeks to kind of get back in shape and have camp. And then we fought, um, got knocked out, was on concussion protocol for another two months, didn't train at all. And then on Christmas, they asked us to fight, you know, Dennis in 19 days. And I was like, man, fuck it. So I got like a three week camp in after being on concussion protocol and not training. So like, it was just, there were, there were bad decisions on, on my part to how to, how to manage my career. So I think with a, you know, with a full camp and, you know, medical condition aside, like that, that Bermuda's fight continues to go how it was going in the first round and the, the first fight, you know, may go a little bit differently depending on. I didn't, I didn't um, know you were, you were in the military. Yeah. Uh, well, I just got out in, in September, but I was prior army and prior air force. You were in the Air Force and the Army? Yeah, Army first and then Air Force. Wow. Where were you, uh, where were you uh, based out of? Uh, so Luke Air Force Base here in Arizona. That was for the Army? Yeah. Oh, that, that's the Air oh, Force? Oh, no. Ar Army. Air Force, yeah. Ar Army is uh, down in Florence. It's a, it's a small city here in Arizona, too. So I was in Florence and then over here at Luke. So oh, well, thank, been... you, thank you for your service, man. That's, that's awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of things to juggle. Um, I love how you I'm never forced. bring up the fact that women are a part of it. You never have to bring up the fact that you've got a, a woman that you divorced, you're getting back. I mean, come on, that's got to be a distraction too, right? A little bit. Ah. Uh, um, so, I mean, so prior to getting to the UFC, um, you know, I have like my son and I was married at the time. There was a lot of things to juggle, you know, and the military. I've, I've always been someone that, that needs a lot of stimulus, like in a lot of different varieties. So I, I try to do a lot which obviously takes the focus away from like just fighting. Um, so it's a lot to juggle with, you know, family life in the beginning. Um, when we, when we divorced actually is when my time kind of freed up and that's when, uh, you know, we fought for contender and UFC and uh, I was actually dating somebody else at the time. She was, she was awesome. So she was very supportive and, and helped out a lot. So no, I, I mean, there's, I haven't, I, I've never been the type to allow those type of distractions to, to hinder me from whatever I'm, pursuing well, I, well, I was gonna distracted fit. because your girl's a smoke show and then <laughs> so uh, I, I was very distracted uh by her so, but so and you guys have you guys have a kid together right yeah yeah we have our, our son yes so you, you guys have a son now did you have a big i always wonder that now did you have a, a, a big wedding no so funny story um so we were engaged when i joined the military uh and they were pretty much like hey she can't get any of your benefits and anything if you guys aren't married technically like engagement doesn't count so we had to go down the courthouse to, to get married like the day before like the week before i i went off to boot camp so she could get benefits and we got uh like extra stipends for for um like housing and everything so we got married just at the courthouse and then the next year we were gonna go get uh have the the ceremony and then she got pregnant the next year and she was, she was pregnant. She can't, you know, fit in her dress and have a wedding. So then it got pushed out like another year. We didn't have like an actual ceremony until like two or three years later. And at that point we were just like, fuck it. Like we're going to go to Vegas and invite like a couple of our friends and just like get lit and call it a day. Like, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. so Bill, so I, I, I meet T and his girl at my show. And then, and then I, I, I go on their Instagram and the girl's like, Hey, we're having, I'm giving, I'm having dog adoptions tomorrow. Right. I'm like, Oh, I want a dog. This is, this is great. You know? Uh, but I don't want to go through a whole, like, so I call T I'm like, listen, these dogs are really cute, but is this the kind of rescue where they're going to ask me a hundred questions, come to my house, you know, start interviewing my exes and the first girl that gave me a hand job in fourth grade, like the whole thing. I don't, I don't, I don't want to like, no, it's easy. Just got to make sure they have the dog. Just go there and get a dog. It'll be no problem. 
okay, cool. So I, I, I drive there. It's like a half hour. I get, I get lost. I, I, sh I show up. They're like, we don't have any dogs. I, I go, what do you mean no dog? They're like, they all went home. I, they all went home. I go, I know T. They got rescued. I go, I know T. Edwards. She goes, who? And then I go, I go, uh, I, I know his, his, his wife. You know, they got divorced, on the back together. Oh, I think she does our social media. I, I go, Why did you think I had any pool at the, at the rest? I, I don't know. I, I don't think, work I there. Think you were the big fighting guy that everyone knew that was, like they would root for your fights or something. I have nothing to do yeah. with that. I just know it because she does it. Dude, they, I'm like, I'm like, I want to see one dog. They're like, no. I'm like, fucking bark like a dog. They almost called the security to get me out of there. It was like <laughs> they called, they called her after. So she was, she was gone when you called. So when you called me, I was like, yeah, I think you just go down, let's go down there and like ask these dogs. Like, I don't think they scream people, just like adopt one, whatever. So she gets back and then she's like, no, it's, it's my appointment. Only guys make an appointment. And I was like, oh, I didn't tell them that. And then like <laughs> the, the, the the people from the, at the rescue call her and they were like, hey, some guy just came down here and like he was demanding to see these dogs. I tried to tell him that like we didn't. We didn't. We had to buy appointment only, and he was like, "I know T. Edwards," and she was like, "I don't know who that is." Like, I was like, "Why would he name drop me?" Like, I don't have any kind of pull there. Like, I don't work there. They don't know who I am. Like, just like, yeah, he was like really mean about it, and then he just left. And I was like, "Oh, Dude, I was pissed." I was, I, I was like, "All right, do I, I had a six-hour drive back. I had a show. I was gonna work out. I'm like, no, I'll just go get dogs instead." So then it was like a whole thing. The, but anyway, we ended up getting a dog the next day. Uh, but yeah, it was like, what a disaster that went. Holy shit, that was, that was bad. <laughs> I, I, it was, dude, the lady was like, we have no dogs. They all went home. They don't want to see you. I was like, no. They got rescued. She said, she said like they had a bunch of appointments that morning and like all the pups from that, that litter got rescued. So there were just no dogs so to he, go. He told me they had, he goes, <laughs> he goes they have three litters. I'm like, fuck, what? So now I'm thinking like 20 dogs. Like everyone just came and took the dog. Yeah, yeah it was the whole thing, dude. So, uh, so here you are now, how, how much are you training are you, every, every day you training or what? No, I, honest to God, I've never trained every day, which is just a part of who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm a very efficient, I'm ambitiously efficient with my training. Like I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that's going to come in and just like run himself into the ground and going through the motions. Like if I come in, like I have a, like a purpose for today's training and I'm going to go like boss the wall on that purpose. And then I'm going to take time to recover in between. Like, so I've, I don't think I've ever in my life trained for fighting more than three days a week, like at, at best, probably three days a week. Um, but I, I, I stay in really good shape. I, I go to sparring. I do my I do rounds. I, I work on my, my jits. I work on my striking. I, I work with, you know, individuals to, to hone in certain skills. Um, so I feel, I feel good. I feel honestly probably twice or three times as better as I, as I was when I was, when I was fighting for the UFC. Um, just, you know, really dialing in different, you know, different gaps that I needed to address and work on and putting on size for, to try to go up to 170. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as soon as COVID clears up, honestly, because I'm, like, like I was telling, uh, telling them before you got back on, like, so I, I work full time. I have like a, a great job in software. Like I don't, I don't, I fight because it's fun. I fight because I like to fight and because I'm athletic and it's my background. I'm not doing an eight week camp busting my ass and coming to a fight and having them say, Oh, somebody has COVID. You're not getting paid. Like the fuck? Like I was here to, to be under the lights and have fun and get paid. Like I'm not here to for shits and giggles. Like so with like half these fights falling through and like whatever else, like no crowd. Like what the f I don't want to come to a sparring day. Like <laughs> there's no crowd. Like this is half the reason I do this shit. So yeah. as soon as they clear this up, like this this is nice downtime for me because I get to like train and you know catch up. Um, but as soon as they get things back open, um, you know, what, what, if UFC, I know it's, it's a, it's a, uh, a very steep competition to, to get signed and get back in. So, um, you know, Bellator is cool. Bellator is paying well. PFL is doing some cool shit. You know, one is, one is doing some, some real cool things and they're overseas to travel. Uh, I don't think I'll, I'll ever do a regional circuit like LFA, like LFA is great. I think they're good for guys that are working their way up. I think I've kind of proven that I'm at the UFC level. I, I train with guys at the UFC level. I don't, I don't need to come in and fight for, you know, a thousand dollars to prove I, I can, you know, make it back in. Like, I just, I just won't fight if that's the case. <laughs> like I'll, I'll, I'll take my chances elsewhere. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll hang out. I'll, I'll stay in shape. I'll train. I'll kind of see what's open in terms of like the, you know, the big four for those leagues. And, um, 
and then as soon as everything clears back up and back to normal, like I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to rock whenever. Now, were you at uh, ASU when Ben Askren was coaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Askren whooped my ass a hot many times. He's a, uh, he's a, <laughs> he's a what? He's he's a very deceivingly strong, gifted wrestler. Like I, I know he like he's he was the original kind of like scramble funk guy before people got like weird and you know scrambly. He is weirdly strong. Like I've never wrestled someone as strong as him. It is, it's like he like, he, like you've seen Ben. Like Ben, he looks kind of like a like a frisbee nerd, whatever. Yeah. This man, I, I tell this story every time someone asks me about Ben. It was like his first week he came into practice. I was a sixty-five pounder, like good size. Uh, he came in and we were wrestling. And I was like, this dude is flat-footed, like slow. He looks he looks awkward. And I hit him with like this mean high crotch, like just real deep, boom. No, he, he, he hit a crotch on me. Like he shot a, a high crotch on me. And I was like, this is terrible. Like I hit, hit the corner, go to sprawl. And he reaches up with one hand. He has one hand on the high crotch, reaches up with one hand and like slowly pulls my head down into a cradle, like against all of my will. Ah. I'm like, no fucking what? And he just pulled. And I was like, I will not. This will. And pulled me into a cradle and just gently put me to my back. And I was like, this <laughs> is some bullshit. And that was every time I went with him. Ah. Like, every time you shot, every time you did anything, he was so oddly scary strong. Like, very slow twitch. Like, slow, like you, can, you can get to his legs, you can sprawl. But if he got, like, his hands locked or got his hands on, like, it was, it was unreal. Like, I don't know how he has that kind of weird strength. But, yeah, it was – He's good. I'll so put how it that do you think he'll do against Jake Paul in boxing? I don't. Ah, people ask me that. I don't fucking know. Honestly, <laughs> like I said, Ben is a phenomenal grappler. Once he gets his hands on you, he is God slow twitch. Like slow twitch, no head movement. Like he moves at a very slow. So I think I don't. I don't know how good this Jake Paul kid is. Like I've seen the kid hit bag and mitts and shit. But honestly, like he's a. He looks like an a guy off the street that did like rec classes. Like, like he knows how to box. Like he, he does the classes. He can do his one, two, he can move his head. Has he ever been in a real fight? Like not sparring, like a real actual people trying to hurt you fight who also know how to fight. I don't think so. So I think like if shit gets tough, he's never been in deep water with another fucking ninja. So I think he'll fold if it can get, if Ben can, if ben can keep it that long, like Ben doesn't move his head. He like, your 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 chin and your neck and those nerve endings only work like you you can't willpower your way out of not getting knocked unconscious. So, so you were on the team. Not, when, were you on the team when uh, Bubba Jenkins won the NCAA's? Yeah, I, I told you this. Bubba's my teammate from middle school. We've known each other since I was ten. Wow. So we went to middle school, high school, and then he went to Penn State for college. I went to ASU, and he came to ASU, and then he cornered me for my first Bellator fight and for a contender. So when he pinned Dave Taylor, you were you were on the bench. That was awesome. That was no, I, I was at home. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't at NCAA's that year. But yeah. yeah, that was that was one of the probably one of his most favorite moments of his life because that whole story and narrative, the build up, like the odds of them making it to the finals together and then to end it that way is like I don't think you could write like a better story of any of thirty for thirty on that whole shit with him and Kale and Penn State and coming back and fucking. His season it was kind of wonky that year. He put it together at the end of the year and then made it through some fucking tough guys in the tournament to have David at the finals at, at Penn State and then hit him with a fucking suicide cradle to finish it. Like, that's, yeah. that, that, that's, that's on par with Caldwell and that fucking headlock they hit Metcalf with. Like, just you don't see people get hit with that at a yeah. high level at the Nash tournament. So. Yeah, so, Bill, if you don't know the story, so Bubba got kicked off the team at Penn State and then went up against the guy that replaced him and pinned him. Who? who, who? The, the all-star, like, like the golden yeah. child of Love golden it. children. Who, but like, that guy now, Penn State. Taylor, is like the number one wrestler in like the world, basically, in his weight class. Yeah. And Penn State is a much more like storied wrestling program than ASU, I'm assuming? At the time. Yeah, at the time. Like, well, they're still like number one. But like, they, like Penn State is like the, the, the Patriots dynasty. And he, like the kid was like the new Tom Brady. Like, he, was, he ended up being a three-time national champ, like, his only, his only loss, I think, was – no, he, he lost to Dake. He lost to uh, – he won a lot. He won a lot. And he wasn't supposed to lose. He was, he was destroying everyone all year. And then Bubba makes it to the finals, who's his former teammate and, like, his former mentor before we got the team. NCAA's is at Penn State, like, in their home arena, 
all the crowd is for Penn State. Bubba's the, the former athlete who got kicked off, like the, the rebel or whatever. Taylor's the golden child, and Bubba hits him with, like, a move you only hit on Scrubs, like on <laughs> JV, hits him with a fucking suicide cradle, pins him, gets up, throws his bands and, like, machine guns, like, his fucking ankle bands and starts doing all this cool fucking <laughs> celebration shit. It was, it was, like, unreal. Like, it was... Yeah. You got to write that script, Adam. There's your, there's your Hollywood script, man. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I was like, make a 30 for, like, that's a, that's a, remember the Titans movie. And then another guy on, on their team had, like, one leg. This guy, Robles. Uh, Anthony Robles, he, he was, he won the national championships with one leg. People were mad, though, because if he had two legs, he'd be like, because he could bench, <laughs> like, 500 pounds. <laughs> He's... He was he was the size of like a sixty five pounder wrestling at one twenty five. So like if he he would grab these <laughs> these kids, that's what they were. He would grab these kids and like they would not go anywhere. Like they'd be moving and like and he would like get on top. He would get on top and just like tech people. Like just tilt tilt tilt. And they could like, they never got their wrist back. And they it tried was tried to get him banned. Like, it, like the guy's got one fucking leg. What are you gonna? They're like they're like he has their advantage. I'm like he has one leg. Uh, how was <laughs> but but the funny part was watching kids try to hit switches on them because they would go for a switch and then there'd be no leg not there. It's- <laughs> they'd be no, like oh shit there's no leg there yeah. so it was uh yeah, yeah that was that was there was a guy one time in mma who had no arms and no legs and they had a documentary on him and he had, he had like a fight what was it kyle maynard kyle maynard and uh Wait, no yeah, arms and no legs in mma he's paraplegic yeah 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 but they couldn't find anybody to fight had, like one fight i think Cause, yeah because if you lose to a guy with no arms no legs it's like yeah i lost but like no one wanted to fight him but they they changed the rules where like you couldn't you couldn't kick him because like you couldn't jump over <laughs> i had a teammate in high school that wrestled kyle maynard and he he jumped over him like the whole the whole <laughs> he would like just run away and then jump over him people were like booing him but he still he won so like, he's like <laughs> I fucking lose. Like, like he's, he was like real strong because he's like again yeah. he's like Anthony where he doesn't have any limbs so his weight he's he's he has less body weight but his joints are strong he has like a nub but he's like strong as fuck like from so if he got you with his nub he was strong yeah. so, so he, he was like fuck. does he have like little hands like in his coming out of his shoulder type of thing is it like no he just had like a he had like a he had like a he had like a delt and that was it like just yeah. nub and like like hip nubs but like if he could he could like lock them together and it was. He beat some good people. <laughs> he was like a, he was like a state qualifier. Or like he got like he placed at states or somewhere. Yeah, when, when I was in high school, they had a thing where you you could wrestle like blind kids, you know. But oh, you yeah. didn't have the advantage because you had to touch them at all times, so you couldn't like sneak behind them and like tackle them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's kind of a bullshit rule, I think. Honestly, I think they we can't change the rules for you because you're blind. Yeah. Like, <laughs> There's no other rule that I have to touch somebody when yeah. they can see. You do like, like, that, you do like snap over here, have them turn their head and <laughs> stomp your feet. <laughs> it's fucked up. Come on, tell me that wouldn't be like. I mean, it'd be fucked up, but you would. I, I would probably watch it. I'd be like, I, I would. I'd, be, I'd definitely be rooting for the blind kid, but I'd be like, oh shit! If, if you went like on the side of him and just like fucking, you know, three point stance and the football tackle the kid when he couldn't see. I mean, I probably, <laughs> I probably would laugh. So, um, so, 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 T, uh, right now you're taking calls, you're taking options. You, uh, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, like, so I was, I was telling him before you jump back on, like, I'm, I'm working, um, I'm training in my spare time. I'm, I'm, I'm making good money. I like my job. I'm, I'm hanging out, but I'm, I'm 30. So I'm, I'm young and I don't have any like serious injuries. I only got one knockout. So, Everything works well. I'm, I'm honestly got not in like a rush to like take, you know, scraps or whatever. Like, hey, you need to fight? Like, no, I don't, I don't need to fight. I like to fight. And I, you know, if somebody offers me something and, you know, they got a, a good, good setup, you know, I'm, I'm always willing and interested to, to fight different organizations, different fucking weight classes. Like, I'm just, I'm a competitor, I'm an athlete. So, um, yeah, whenever, whenever, but it's not. It's not a scenario where I'm like chomping at the bit to to get back in it. So, got it. Now your we'll teammate see. O'Malley, your teammate O'Malley, uh, they're saying him versus Dominic Cruz is the fight to make. That would be a good fight to see. That would, you know, the the, the vet and the the new hot shot. They're both you know stand up guys that like to move on their feet and do some cool shit. I think the fans would like it. I think it would be a a good style matchup to watch. I think it like on par with the uh, 
like Izzy and, and Anderson Silva, like, you know, it's not going to be boring. You know, neither guys like to wrestle and, and ground and pound. They both want to move and do highlight shit. So it's a fun fight to watch. I imagine it would sell a lot of tickets. So I, it would be silly if the UFC didn't make that happen. I think both guys want that fight as well. It's a payday for both of them. It looks good for both of them. It, it makes a whole lot of sense, honestly. So Who wins? Um, good question. I'm gonna have to go sugar, honestly, because I think people think Sean is what Sean is on social media. They think Sean's like the cocky, flashy guy. He only knows like spinning heel kicks and dyes his hair. But like they forget like sugar trains with like Tank and Tim and all the guys at the lab. Like Kyle, like people see how good Kyler is. Like him and Kyler have been training together since they were both amateurs. Like, like sugar's good everywhere like sugar can sugar can wrestle i've I've wrestled with sugar i've showed him some shit he showed me some shit like sugar's good everywhere i think the cheeto fight kind of made him lose some some hype because his ankle and people were like oh he's a fucking you know one trick pony like whatever like you know if you watched him at the the quad grappling like he he, he had a, a jits match with Gilbert melendez he built he beat melendez he's rough like he can the dude can scrap everywhere he's fucking good everywhere so I think he's a he's similar to Connor, where people people forget how good he is because they get lost like in all the other shit that like he's doing, like all the marketing and all the hype. Like in social media, they're like, "Oh, he's a fucking he's a hype train." Like, no, he just he just does it. He does it, does it all. Like he's fucking good. He's an athlete. If you talk to him, like he's he's humble. He's fucking driven. The dude like trains his ass off. He also just knows how to market himself and get paid. So, I'm 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 going Sean. I think Sean has uh has the experience. I think he has the well-roundedness to win in different parts of the fight. I think, uh, I think stylistically for Dom, it's not awesome. I think it's similar to like Cody where, where Dom likes to move a lot and he gets guys to overcommit and baits them into, you know, bad, bad trades. Um, where sugar, sugar is not that overzealous kind of fighter. Like he'll, he'll stand here and, you know, you can dance around and, and faint. Like he's going to stay, he's not going to chase you around, which is what Dom usually needs for, to capitalize on guys, guys that chase him. And Sugar is, you know, 5'11", six foot. He can touch you from here. He's got striking out the ass. Like, he, I think it's, it, it'll, it'll, be a, it'll be a good fight to watch. I think Sugar comes out with it, though. I like it. I like it. So where can people follow you uh, on social media? Uh, probably Instagram. That's probably, it's usually where I'm at. Tango underscore MMA. I'm on Twitter occasionally, but it's mostly just me ranting about shit but that's why i'm that's why i'm verified though which makes me mad because like i'm not on twitter and they verified me but instagram doesn't verify me but that's where i'm at well you're verified my it, lo- it looks cooler if i was on uh, no, instagram you're, verified you're good. dude you and your girl look cool enough right so, <laughs> we'll good. take it you're good how did, by the way how where, where, where did you meet her uh back at odu she was uh, on the dance team and oh. i was on the wrestling team and we had some mutual friends and i was like oh damn what's up girl <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie, you're getting you're getting lots of uh, attention on the podcast right now because you're you're a baddie. And they were like, "Oh, damn." What was, your, right uh, now. How, what was your pick? Now, how did you get back with her after you got divorced? What was that? <laughs> how did we get back? It's actually a funny story if you want to hear it. Um, so I, I don't know if you know my brother Ethan. Um, we lived together uh, this past year. We were both living in Scottsdale, paying a bunch of money, and it was stupid. So we were like, "Let's just room together, like whatever." So. Uh, and he watches Jace um, a lot when I was working. So um, we lived together. Uh, him and his fiance got pregnant um, during COVID, one of the COVID babies. Um, and they, they were going to need the uh, extra room or my room for the nursery or a room for the nursery. And I was like, okay, well, there's no point in both of us moving out to you know find a new spot. So you guys can move in or move the nursery to my room and I'll find a new place. Um, and during that time, me and her were, were on better terms. We hadn't really spoken like three years outside of, uh, you know, scheduling stuff for Jace. Um, but we were on better terms and kind of talking about some stuff. And uh, like playfully, it was like, oh, we should just get a three bedroom and move in together. And then we'll just like stay on separate sides of the house. And, um, and we, we did that. And then, you know, things kind of one thing led to another. Um, Come on. You kind of had some. Story. Give me a break. Uh, I, I did. See, I, it's funny. I guess it's, it's naivety. I was like, oh yeah, this will be, this will be fine. Like we just, everybody stays on their side of the house and like we're, we just keep boundaries and like, you know, <laughs> keep it very platonic. 
and that did, it, didn't, it didn't happen that way at all. Who, who made the first and move? We were, you go in her room first, or she came in your room? Um, I mean, full disclosure, we were we, we were hooking up before we moved in. It was oh. like very like it was very like uh, I don't know how to explain it. It was like oh like hey, what are you doing? Okay, cool, come over. Like it's very business like <laughs> sexual needs, and then, but ah. then yeah. So when we when we moved in together, it was kind of like oh yeah, okay, yeah. Got it. You're in the mood. I'm in the mood. Cool. No, she's, she's one of those girls Shake that don't, don't realize like her body until you go on her Instagram. Because at, at the comedy show, I was like, oh, she's she's a very pretty girl. And then I went on her Instagram. I'm like, what the fuck? This is what's going on here. <laughs> like she's like, she's like showing off her her like. She's like, look at my look at this muscle yeah. next to my ass. And you're like, yeah, that's what I'm gonna look at. I'm not gonna do it. I'm, yeah. I just made friends with T. I'm not gonna stalk his girlfriend's. <laughs> no, I mean. I'm like, this is. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to get the dog, and I gotta scroll through fucking, <laughs> distractions you know. and shit. Yeah, like, I'm trying to find information. You got your ass it's out. Smart, because she's, she's like, "Hey, like, look at this camel toe," and there's like a puppy in the corner, and you're like, "Wait a minute, like, this." No, I did not. All right, so well, listen, P, uh, you're you're a great guy, great fighter. Uh, thank you for coming on the podcast. Sorry for the bad service and connection, but uh, I will talk to you soon, brother. Of course. Thank you guys for having me. Amen. Take care. Good luck, hey, buddy. All right. That was T. Edwards. Nice guy. Yeah, he seems cool. Yeah. It's crazy, right? It's crazy how, how like, normal some of these guys are. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was, like, very – he's, like, he has a full-time job as a, as a software engineer. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's uh... He has, like, a full-time job. <laughs> and he said it was, like, software. <laughs> and then he just like beats people up like for fun because <laughs> for fun. Fun. Yeah, i'm yeah. athletic i'll beat people up i'm athletic so i'll just be in the ufc <laughs> uh, it's crazy you couldn't have someone do that like the guy on the lakers is a full-time softball you know i i just i just like basketball so i'll just play in the finals and score 75 yeah. points you know yeah it's yeah it's crazy so what do you got coming up bill um what i got coming up i got uh Hell, man! What I got? Well, I got I, I got a show in in, in uh, when's this come out? <laughs> uh, probably tonight. If I, if I I don't know. It depends on how, how about this? I'm headlining Houston on the fourth at a place called. I'll post on my Instagram at Bill Dawes. I'm headlining this gig in Houston. I forget the name. Of the place. I'm such a, I'm so bad. And you were just on a TV show, right? Last week. Oh, I just shot SWAT. I just shot a week on SWAT. So that comes out in like uh, I don't know, like a, a month or two. What was your part? Yeah. <laughs> I played a, I play a truck driver who is uh, a vigilante a- attacking people who are sex trafficking. Oh, that's actually good. I actually, like it's actually kind of kind of cool part. I play, I play for once. I play like a white guy who's not like a white supremacist evil like clans member or something. So, oh, um, but but you still get arrested for that or no? Yeah, I still get arrested. Oh, that sucks. Because I, I, I try to like take off with this girl and they think I'm trying to like traffic her. And I was like, no, I'm with, I'm with truckers against trafficking. And I have a card. And I was like, truckers against trafficking? What a, what a corny line I have to say. It, it turns, it's a real organization, actually. I was trying to think of a, uh, a Ted. Who, who's, who's that senator from, from Florida? Uh, the guy who's in all kinds of trouble? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Matt. 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 Matt Gates, right? Yeah, Matt Gates. I think of a, a joke with him and Hunter Biden are going to be the, like the new Bang Brothers. You know, like, <laughs> but, but the problem is that he he's like going for underage women, like, like so then they're going like I'm like people, oh, you think pedophilia is funny? Oh, I know, like, I know, yeah, I know. something. But like, it's just like the Bang Brothers were kind of cool, you know. So it's like you have to <laughs> like they're starting their own Bang Bus tour. There's a there's a joke there somewhere. I'm trying to think. What I know it. that's a tough one. That's a tough one, man. You guys, you know. I got yeah, but I, I like it though. I think there's something there, because you, yeah. you're also you're also hitting both of them. You're hitting uh. Of course. Yeah, yeah, that dude, man, what a fucking clown that guy is. He's, Good God. They're saying that he was on the um the Senate floor showing videos of girls he fucked, and showing people pictures of, of girls he fucked on the Senate floor. What? Yeah, like yo, check out this one or check out this one. Like, I mean, what, what senator is he showing it to? These guys are all like 90 years old. Are they like, hey, man, let me see. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like Pelosi. Hey, Nancy, look at this. That's nuts. <laughs> Pelosi. She's not even a senator. That's how little I know about anything. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the whole thing is like it's crazy. And then and, and then people were like, some girl was like on Twitter going, "The guys really show pictures of like women they fucked." 
And then these guys are like, I don't know anybody, but there was a guy at work. It was a bunch of like a hundred, <laughs> hundreds of responses of people that knew somebody that did that. They're like, and they felt bad for not saying anything. I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I believe They're, it. They've been torn up for years that they were quiet. I believe this. It's like, dude, it's like, come on, man. Like, I don't know, it's, it's all bad. It's all bad, it's all bad. Um, but yeah, I'm in Chattanooga. Doing shows this week at the Choo Choo Room. It's all it's all trains. I'm in like a train colony. Chad Nuga uh, Choo Choo. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was just cool. Oh, did I get it worked out? Not yet. Oh, uh, I just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Wi-Fi. I wonder if I got the Wi-Fi worked out yet. Because I'm, I'm going through my hotspot on my phone, and then I just got I got I just got a text from my phone saying I have no more storage because of it. <laughs> so this is like. But whatever. These aren't like these aren't real problems. I mean, people yeah. have people are worried about like eating and like you know, paying yeah. rent. This is like you know, this isn't a somebody got a, somebody got his finger ripped off and didn't respond. <laughs> so what the fuck am I complaining about slow Wi-Fi? You know? Yeah. Uh, but listen, Bill, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, of course, man. Always fun. Yeah. Sorry that like I interrupted a little bit. It's just I, I think today was hard because of the. Timing was off, you know. It's also Zoom, so it's always hard to know when people are. You know what I mean? Like I probably interrupted you a bajillion times. No, but it's Zoom, but also your picture is frozen, so like I I could hear you, but I but your mouth looks like I can't tell if you're speaking or not. <laughs> so that's also why you know. But anyway, uh, Bill, thank you, thank you for doing. I'm I'm so honored to have you on the show. I I'm getting a lot of people. They just call you the brown belt. They're like keep the, <laughs> they're, like, they're like keep the brown belt, keep the brown belt. So oh, good. Uh, so you're also known as the brown belt on these circles. I'll take it, man. And uh, and thanks. I like the Puerto Rican guy. He had a good energy. Huh? He did. He did. He had a lot to say. <laughs> he did. I mean, in a good way. He had a lot to say. And I felt like it was hard because of all the, you know, yeah. technical even, shit. Even, like, even his rooster was talkative. <laughs> <laughs> that rooster was the best. Anyway, uh, have a good weekend, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.